What's up, good people? What's up, good people? It's your boy, Dr. Leroy McKenzie Jr. Uh, we in the brand new lab. It's another, another Mindset Motivate Move Monday with your boy. Are you ready to be pushed? It is my objective, it is my assignment this week to push you to your and beyond your limit. And you'll get what I'm saying in a second when I say to push you. But we're here on on this Monday morning, we're in the new quarter. We're in the third year, for those of you who are with us in, and have read the book 12-week year, you know what I'm talking about. But for the, for those entrepreneurs, leaders, this is the with the beginning of the third quarter. This is the first month of the third quarter. Are you ready to push? This is when you begin to push towards the end of the year. It's the third leg for those that have been a part of the training that I do. This is the third leg, the third leg in in your. Uh, in your track and field track, you have the first leg, second leg, third leg, fourth leg, which is your anchor. We are in the third leg of of your um, you know of, of your running your 2024 race. So you should by now you should be in full stride because you've done the review. You know those adjustments that you need to make. You know the shifts that need to be done. You should know what's working. You should know what's not working. You should know what's going to leave. You know what you're not going to use anymore, and then what is going to stay, which is those things that you're going to continue to do. You may tweak them a little bit, but they seem to be working very, very well. So are you ready to go? Are you ready to push? And when I say push, I mean you're going to progress, you're going to understand, you're going to serve, and you're going to develop good habits. What habits do you have? So this week, we're going to talk about your push strategy. Your push. What's your push strategy for this third quarter? How are you going to progress? What is it that you need to understand about you, your business, and your brand, those that you are partnering with, those that you collaborate with? What is it that you need to understand? How can you serve your clients better? How do you serve those that you serve better? How do you serve your internal clients, which are those that work for you? How do you serve those that work with you in, in collaboration with you? How do you serve them better? And then how do you serve those people that are your ideal client? How do you serve them a better way in this third quarter? How do you make it better so that they continue to want to come back and utilize your products and services? How do you gain new customers, clients, those that you serve? How do you gain uh, them? What are the things that you need to do? In order to be able to, uh, in order to be able to to make their experience with you better, that's the main thing. How you serve them better is you create for them an experience that makes them want to return uh, and use your products and services over and over again, and also to be able to tell someone else about your product and your service. So let's push this week. We're going to push, and and today on this mindset motivate move Monday, I, I want we're gonna I want to talk about progress. How do you progress? How do you gain progress? Or or what does progress look like to you going into this third quarter? What does progress look like to you at the end of this third quarter, July, August, and September? What does progress look like for you? And and here's a couple of things and um, that I'm done. Three things, three things that you do, or four things. I'm sorry that you do in order to be able to progress. And the the first thing is you got to set clear goals. What are your goals? Or I call them assignments. Y'all may call them goals. What are your assignments 
for this third quarter. Hopefully you, you sat down at the beginning of this month and began to work on these. If not, then I, I, that's your assignment for today. Set the goals that you have for this third quarter. You want to define short-term, long-term goals to create a roadmap for your success. This is, like I said, as entrepreneurs, at least we don't think in days, weeks, quarters, months. We think in decades. So by 2034, what you're doing today, you're setting your your goals or your assignments up so that you can get to your ultimate goal of 20. 34. What are, what are those long-term, what are your short-term goals? What do you need to do in these next uh, weekly, daily, quarterly in order to be able to get you to the end of 2024? And then you begin that cycle each and every quarter. If, if you're going to be successful, it has, you have to develop. One of the things that I've discovered is every successful entrepreneur has a routine. They have their time measured out. They do not waste time. Setting goals give you the ability, setting clear goals give you the ability to be able to be disciplined, to be consistent, to be committed, um, and to have and to not waste your time. Y'all know what we're about. Reclaiming your time. If you're going to reclaim your time as an entrepreneur, you have to be structured. You have to have goals that you set, and and they have to be measurable. So the first thing to progress, you you must set goals. You must set. You must have an assignment. You must have assignments. Second thing is 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 continuous learning. Are you continually learning? And this can be done in different form, different forms. You want to stay updated um, with your industry trends. Um, you, you, if you need to take a course, you can take a course. Um, if you need to attend workshops, you do that to sharpen your skills. Reading books. Um, my goal this year, one of the ways that I, I am continuously learning is my uh, is the is the books that I read. I'm always trying to find books that I can read that will enhance my skill, that will give me another skill set, that will teach me something that I need to that I need to learn. My goal this year is to read 40 books. That is that is my goal is to read 40 books. And and in reading 40 books, it gives me the ability to continuously be learning. And, and even even reading books, you, it can be done either through audio where you're listening to them or it can be where you physically read. I like to physically read, but I do do both. Mine is an intersection of, of both. Some some books I, I, I physically read <laughs> like like this. This is one of the books that I'm reading right now. I don't know. Uh, let's see. I'll take this off. I don't know if I can take it off. Uh, oh, there we go. Let's see. And I, I, I'm going to finish this book by this week. It's called, it's called, What Would the Rockefellers Do? I, I suggest that every entrepreneur that is watching me today, that you, if you're watching, whether you're watching the replay, whether you're watching uh, live now, um, I recommend this book to each and every entrepreneur to read. What would the Rockefellers do? And, and I, you can go to your local library and get it. That's what I did. But I actually want this one in my library, so I gotta find. I gotta find it somewhere um, to be able to buy it because it is it is a vital book in um, in legacy in in um, in business building, brand building. Everything it, it teaches you how the Rockefellers built their empire. So always be learning. Um, the next one, the third one, is adaptability. You you want to be willing to pivot, adjust, shift um, your your strategies as needed to stay relevant and competitive. And and it's not even staying relevant, but it's actually st being able to understand where your market is, where your market was, is, and where it's going. If you if you have that ability, if you're paying attention and you're learning your industry, you're learning where the products, your products and services are, are fit into the marketplace, 
you can make those adjustments. This year, we're six months in already. We're going into the seventh month now. So you have enough data for this year to understand <coughs> what you did well, what you didn't do well, the things that, that you need to kind of tweak, the things that you that just aren't working and you can adjust it and you move it off the you know, you move it off of, you know, you move it off of your, off of your shelf, <laughs> something that you're not going to offer, it just didn't work, well, that wasn't a good idea, um, and you move, uh, you move beyond that, you've got enough uh, data now to be able to know going into, that can be part of your goal setting, hey, these are the things that, that uh, we did that did work, or uh, didn't work, or these are the things that did work, so I want to do more of this in the uh in in going in the second half of 2024 this didn't work so i don't want to i do want to do less of that in 2024 hey hey sandra how are you <laughs> good to see you thanks for tuning in but when you do that it gives you the ability to be able to maximize your bottom line and i say this all the time and i use this correlation real quick and then i'm done um i got one more and i'm done but when i go to the when I go to the grocery store, and even when I was working at, um, you know, at uh, uh, at K and G, the the clothing store, there there were things that that I, I just didn't understand why managers did not um, what their process was. I'm gonna say they didn't what their process was when it came to their inventory and knowing what was selling, what was doing well, and then. What wasn't? Because when I noticed when I go to the store and there's certain things that I go there to get, they're not there. I'll give you an example. Combos. I love the cracker, um, the cracker and cheese combos. Love, absolutely love them. But every time, well, when I go to Five and Below, they got tons of the pretzels and cheese and the pepperoni and, and flavored ones, everything is pretzel and everything else. And I'm like, don't they understand if if there's none of the <laughs> of the cracker and cheese combos on your shelf and you're putting them out there or you're out of them, you you might want to think about having that there because you know it's selling. Same thing when I go in the giant. Same thing when I go to other stores where they have a ton of, of things that are sitting there, just sitting there on the shelf because no one's buying them. And 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 and, and or they had they have they don't have any of some of the other items that that they can't keep them on the shelf. You would think that they would have the ability to adapt and say, hey, you know what, I want to make sure that I order more of the combos with crackers and cheese versus the other because I still got tons of those and I don't want to keep ordering stuff that people are not buying. It just, it, that's not <coughs> adding up to me. I just think that I don't understand how people, <coughs> how they, how the, the, the store managers, entrepreneurs aren't making that adapt, that adjustment. They don't make that, they don't have that adaptability or don't seem to have that adaptability. So you got to be adaptable. That's what I'm saying. You got to be adaptable. You have to be willing to shift. You got to be willing to pivot and move. And then the last one is, is you got to monitor, monitor your, your progress. You got to have matrix. You have a me to me have a metrics, a means to be able to measure your progress. You have to regularly review your performance and, and, and metrics to track progress and to make informed decisions. That's what um, monitoring your metrics will allow you to do. It will allow you to make informed decisions. What I just talked about, seeing the inventory, knowing your inventory. You can then say, you know, it would be, uh, I'm making an informed decision because of this, because this is what I'm seeing. This is what, you know, my inventory is telling me. This is what the data is telling me. And then I, as a result of that, can be more successful. I can see the needle moving. I make progress in who uh, we are as a, as a business, as a brand, and even as an individual. So that, that, that's the first part 
of your push system, of your push strategy. You got to make progress. Real quick, you want to set clear goals. You want to have be continuously learning. You want to be adaptable. And you want to monitor your metrics. It's your boy, Dr. Leroy McKenzie Jr., the Impact Builder. We'll be right back here tomorrow on Talk To Me Tuesday. We'll see you soon. Have a great day. Oh, I'm sorry. By the way, I will, if, if you, I'm sorry. Um, if you want to talk more about the push system, we want to, if you want to implement this push system into your uh, your daily structure, this is what we do. Like I said, this is what we do in the entrepreneurial briefcase. We assist you in being able to put systems like this into place so that you can progress, understand, serve, and and develop healthy habits. So um, the contact information will be right here in the description. Don't forget, go over to the YouTube channel. 500 subscribers, y'all. 500 subscribers in 30 days. That is my goal for every 30 days. 500 subscribers. That's part of my goal setting for going into this third quarter. I need 500 subscribers. I'll make sure that the link to the YouTube channel uh, page is in there as well, too. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace.